SEC Unfiltered platform. I appreciate you guys listening to all our content on all our channels and all our platforms. I'm your host, Dave Schumate, longtime SEC personnel, recruiting staffer. Now I'm here to give you the top five impact players for the Auburn Tigers heading into 2024. You may be asking, why is there just a blank wall behind you, Dave? Well, this is the studio room here, Auburn fans. So you, you should be fired up. You get to, quote, unquote, pop the cherry of us being in our new studio. This is something Alabama and Auburn did. We're going alphabetical order of the top five impact players for teams in the SEC this year. So, Auburn fans, you should be fired up. Again, I ordered shelves. By Friday, they'll be here. We'll have all the memorabilia up. We're here in the new house. But you are the first recorded segment in this studio. So, congratulations. But before we get to the segment that you're here for, we do have to pay some bills, guys. We do got to pay some bills. And go see our buddies at MyBookie. Go to MyBookie.ag and use code SECU at sign up to receive a, a special welcome offer on your first deposit. Guys, I highly encourage it. There's really not a lot to bet on right now. I mean, I guess the Olympics, if you're into that. I'm not into that. But college football is just around the season. You bet your boy he's going to have his app at MyBookie. Dot ag and I'm gonna be betting on some college football games, college basketball, going into college baseball. Love it all, even NFL going too. So go, you go use our guys. First time code SECU at sign up to receive a special welcome offer on your first deposit, guys. I, I highly encourage that. But if you listen to my first two segments, if you're following this series along, top five impact players for all 16 teams in the SEC. I did Alabama and Arkansas, like I mentioned, alphabetically. I thought Alabama was tough. A lot of guys could have been that. I felt good about my Arkansas one. And for this Auburn one, the one you're here for, I felt pretty good about it. I, I talked to some people at Auburn, got some summer details, how some of the guys have been doing this offseason, uh, even talked to some of the guys going back this spring. I feel good about this list. Auburn's an interesting one, but I, I feel good about this one. I feel good about the Arkansas one, Auburn, Alabama. I thought that could have gone either way. Hey, tell me in the comments at the end what you think about this one, guys. But going in reverse chronological order here, we're going to start at five. Number five, the leading rusher for the Auburn Tigers from 2023, arguably heading into the season, probably a top two running back heading into the season. I'd say probably him and Trevor Etienne, I would say. But again, like I said, Auburn's leading rusher from last season returns. He's going to be an impact player for Hugh Freeze. It's really Hugh Freeze's first time calling the offense as Auburn fans now. I thought that was a little interesting why he didn't do that last year because that's what Hugh's best at. Like he tried to be that CEO. But to my point here, I think this is going to be real beneficial for Jarquez Hunter already. He was the leading rusher for Auburn last year, just shy of 1,000 yards. And Freeze loves to sling it around. But don't get it twisted. Hunter is going to be a critical part of this offense. Like I said, factor in if the passing game gets going, if Peyton Thorne can take that next step with you, Freeze, they have some guys, Cam Coleman, Keandre Lambert Scott, Perry Thompson step up on the outside, Rivaldo Fel Fairweather, guys like that. That's going to open up holes in the run game for Jarquez Hunter, Demari Austin, and the boys. But specifically here, Jarquez Hunter, I think he's going to be an impact player for this Auburn offense. He checks in at number five. On the coming in at number four, we're going to the other side of the ball. We're going on the defensive side of the ball. We're going with DJ Durkin's new defense. We're going to number four. This one may surprise some people, but Jalen McLeod, the buck, at the buck edge position, flashed at times in 2023. Probably best game if you wanted to back in, go back and review some tape. Probably that Arkansas game in Fayetteville, and that's probably one of the more watched games if you're an Auburn fan from Hugh Freeze's first year. Probably their best game from top to bottom. He had three and a half sacks against Arkansas, had eight tackles against Alabama. That was another good one from Jalen McLeod. But now remember, he was the App State transfer from two years ago. He was at App State the year, if you want to put it, when they beat Texas A&M. So last year was his first year at Auburn. And from everything I'm hearing internally, this is from an offensive guy on Auburn staff. He's been, he was a pain to block in the spring. And in any one-on-one -on -one sessions or agility drills they've had this year, he's taken that next step. He's taking that next up. And another guy, he didn't make my list, probably a little honorable mention, Keldrick Falk probably has a higher ceiling than Jalen McLeod. But I think Jalen McLeod takes that next step this year. From talking to you, I think he's going to be the pass rusher that Auburn lacked last year and that they need. I think that's going to be Jalen McLeod um, heading into 2024, and he's going to make an impact. This is more of a field pick and from, gain, from gathering intel. I like Jalen McLeod. I think he has the year people thought he would have last year, but I think it's going to be this year. I think DJ Durkin is going to be a big factor on why that is. Number three, it's another Intel pick. This is another go watch the film. Hey guys, there's not a more – we always forget about this. Just go ask Tennessee and Josh Heupel about not having a center. 
Go ask Tennessee and Josh Heupel. I can't give you their initial cell phone, but I encourage you to reach out to them on social media. Why this matters, Auburn fans. And you know, Connor Lou started the last six games of the season due to injury last year. Due to an injury, he got six straight starts in the year. Guy, guy is a pro's pro the way he – uh, preparers going into games. Ask anyone in that building. Jake Thornton, his position coach, the offensive line. Ask him. The guy's on the leadership council as a true sophomore already and has become a leader on the offensive line, if not the leader. He's only gotten stronger, already gotten more comfortable within this offense, the checks that he's going to have to make in the line of scrimmage. I think people underestimate how hard it is to play center. I think you just underestimate. Oh, he's just snapping. No, you got someone lined up over you. You're snapping within seconds. You got to get your hands up. And adjust him to any kind of different direction, whatever that may be. This is an under the radar wild card. I think some people may think this is a little too high, but I don't. I think if Auburn's offense is going to go take that next step under Hugh Freeze, Hugh Freeze made the right call. He's at his best, like I stated earlier, when he's calling the plays. I think it's only going to make Peyton Thorne better. Hey, for Peyton Thorne to be better, it's got to start up front and get the right calls, right checks. That starts with Connor Lou. I, I think he's that ultimate pro pro. I mean, Maybe one of the better off linemen's Auburn's had since maybe Braden Smith. I think by the time his career ends, maybe not at the end of this year. But remember, he's going to have another year or two, probably two. Like, he's that ahead. I, I, I like what Connor Lou's doing again. Braden Smith, I know Braden Smith played guard. But probably the best offensive lineman Auburn's had probably since Braden Smith, in my opinion. He's on track to be that at this point. Some people may be like, well, this is this kind of random. Why would a center be the biggest impact? I think people think explosive plays, wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks. Maybe an edge rusher. I already said Jalen McLeod and Keldrick fought. But Connor Lou, I think he's key. He's key taking that next step. He looked phenomenal to end the year. I think he checks in at number three. I think he is going to be the third impact player for the Auburn Tigers heading into 2024. Number two, we're going back to the defensive side of the ball. I like how we're back and forth. A little mix it up here. With Arkansas, it's a real offensive heavy. But number two here, call me crazy, guys, Eugene Asante at linebacker. Got it. Did, didn't really have the 2022 season he wanted. But 2023 season had a big game against Cal and never really gave up that spot. Led the team last year in tackles with 86. I'm betting that number. Here's my bold take. Hits triple digits this year. I think he has a 100 tackle season this year. Yeah, he's undersized. May not possess the exact NFL size that NFL personnel people look for. But Auburn fans are familiar with somebody like that. That same position. Not too long ago. Let's go read back. Let's go back in the time machine back to 2017, 2018. The year Auburn won the West in 2017. Remember a guy named Deshaun Davis from Mobile, Alabama, Pritchard to be exact, Viger High School. I think we could see a similar ascension. I mean, he was an undersized guy, had 82 tackles in 2017, and elevated that to 116 in 2018. Took his play up a level. Deshaun Davis is that dude. He was a playmaker, not a big time, not going to go make a living playing professional football. I think he's the Linebackers coach now at North Alabama for the fight Lions, baby. Shout out Brent Deerman and Brock Caraboa. But he was a productive, very productive college player. Travis Williams, I worked with him. That was his position coach at Auburn. Has nothing, has nothing but great things to say about him. Also think DJ Durkin is going to be great for Asante as he developed quite a few players in the SEC throughout his career. Just last year, go back to College Station where DJ Durkin was the D.C. last year. Y'all remember Torian York? Freshman All-American at the inside linebacker spot. DJ Durkin's a good football coach, guys. Take don't, don't look what he did off the field. Again, that's a conversation for another day. Guy's a good football coach. Go look at his track record at Florida, his second year at Ole Miss, what he did at AM. I think Eugene Asante is in for a big year and will be the leader of this Auburn defense. And that is why he comes in at number two. I mean, also imagine if Auburn can get any kind of help on the interior defensive line, whether that's Isaiah Rates coming over for AM, Jason Jones finally stepping up after transferring from Oregon. He's been in the program two years now. Maybe he steps up. If they can go take on blocks and free up Asa Eugene Asante, um, imagine that, guys. Imagine Eugene Asante when he's not just getting swallowed by guards and there's some interior presence for Auburn up front. That's only going to make him better. Again, I'm telling you. What do you have like 86 tackle last year? I think that's going to be triple digits this year. Hold, hold me to that one, Auburn fans. Hold me to that one. And then number one, Cam Coleman, the wide receiver from Central Phoenix City. It's wild, wild to say a true freshman is the number one impact player. But I think he's probably the best pure wide receiver Auburn has had out of high school in my lifetime. I don't want to say ever. I don't want to go into that. But let's be honest, Auburn hasn't really been in it a factory of wide receivers. In my lifetime, the best Auburn wide receivers, maybe Frank Sanders, uh, Ben Obamanu, Devin Aroma should do, 
Sammy Coates was pretty good. Um, I mean, Duke Williams had ability. I mean, Darius Slayton, when I worked at Auburn in 2016, when I was on the assistant director or player personnel there, Darius Slayton was a good player. Ryan Davis was a good player. But no real NFL dudes. Cam Coleman's that guy. He's the best pure wide receiver Auburn has signed at a high school in my lifetime. And you saw what he did in the A-Day game. But go put on his high school film from Central Phoenix City. Hugh Freeze, Peyton Thorne also need this to be the number one impact players for the Tigers for them to go take that. They need some weapons. And they've done a good job. Perry Thompson out of high school. Uh, Keandre Lambert. Uh, Ke- yeah, Keandre uh, Lambert. What, Scott? Adder, yeah, from Penn State. Uh, he, he's Keandre Lambert Smith. Sorry, right off top. Apologize, fans. Uh, Keandre Lambert Smith. From coming over from Penn State, he's going to be a weapon for him too. Rivaldo Fairweather, and I think even Peyton Thorne, Jarquez Hunter, and Demari Austin, all these guys would benefit from Cam Coleman being a ball player. I mean, let, let's be honest. Keandre Lambert Smith, let me repeat it, the Penn State transfer, Perry Thompson, Rivaldo Fairweather, Peyton Thorne, Jarquez Hunter, and Demari Austin, all those guys in the run game. All those guys, I mean, all those guys would be affected is if Cam Coleman can come in and draw double teams. This would open up the offense in multiple ways, folks. I'm telling you, it would would help everyone across the board, the run game, the passing game. It would free up a lot. If this happens and we saw it in the A-Day game, and you go put on his high school film, this is real. If Auburn gets a true number one threat on the outside like they haven't had in quite a while, if ever, it will impact the entire offense bleed over into the entire entire team defense special teams as well I, like i mentioned wild to say for a true freshman wild to say for a true freshman that he will be the biggest impact uh for such a high level program like auburn i mean i know everybody remembers amari cooper at alabama as a true freshman calvin ridley jerry judy Devontae smith all of them but julio jones established himself he established alabama when he was just the true number one guy. I mean, he just had like Darius Hanks, Marquise Mays guys around him like that. And guys like Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy, Dwight Smith had other help. This is Cam Coleman's time to come in. And I, and I would even say Cam Coleman has more help than Julio Jones initially did in 2008 when he walked into Tuscaloosa. But th- this is kind of that feel. Like he has a Julio Jones type. Dang, this is – because Alabama had, had some massive big-time receiver in a while. Maybe D.J. Hall, but like not some real dude like from an NFL standpoint. Cam Coleman's that guy, and I think it's going to be similar to Julio Jones if the work ethic can follow that. People forget Julio Jones, he was a freak athlete, but a freakish work ethic as well. Uh, I think it's similar to that. I think this is similar signing to that. Cam Coleman's a difference maker. He's a difference maker. We've already seen it against College of Town. I keep mentioning the A-Day game. But go watch Go watch his highlights in high school. Go watch the full game tape as well. I mean, again, I work at Quickie. We do film cut-ups for college teams across the country. I've watched his full eval tape. And when I'm talking about full eval tape, good, bad, ugly. The drops and stuff, too. I mean, Cam Coleman's a freak show now, guys. He He's going to be a massive impact for Auburn this year. And then just want to go over a couple other guys that just missed the cut. Keontae Scott, nickel defensive back, entered the portal, came back. I thought he could be a big impact player for Auburn in the secondary uh, with Coach Kelly, Charles Kelly on the back end. I think he's going to have a big say. I, I like the mixture of him and DJ Durkin together. I thought Keontae Scott could have been the Peyton Thorne, quarterback, I think he takes it up a level. I think he's going to be a solid player for Auburn. You can make a case he could be a top five impact player for Auburn. Because, again, the quarterback position is the most important position in the sport. It's probably the most important position in all of sports, if you want to be completely honest. You're not going to win a championship in today's football high school, college, or pro if your quarterback is not one of your best players. It's just not going to happen. And I mentioned him earlier, Keldrick Falk, another uh, edge guy. Put him in that same mold um, is our guy earlier, uh, Jalen McLeod at the butt position. One of those edge rushers. I think Auburn needs someone to step up from the edge, from the edge pass rush perspective. But the top five impact players for the Auburn Tigers heading into 2024. Coming at number five, Jarquez Hunter at the running back position, leading rusher last year. Has a real shot to take it up another level. Number four, Jalen McLeod at Buck. This is Intel and Field coming off the tape. I think he has a year this year that he was supposed to have last year when he was coming from App State. Watch out for Jalen McLeod. Uh, Number three, Connor Lou, probably one of the best offensive linemen, at least interior offensive linemen that Auburn's had since Braden Smith. Uh, Number two, Eugene Asante. I think his – he led him in tackles with 86 last year. I think that gets into triple digits. Remember, Deshaun Davis, I like that comparison, especially with DJ Durkin taking over the defense. And then number one, Cam Coleman, he's going to raise that offense up another level if he can. If he can command double teams, I'm telling you, folks, if he commands double teams, no one's going to be a bigger fan than Cam. Keandre Lambert-Smith from Penn State. Perry Thompson, the high school wide receiver they signed. Rivaldo Fairweather, who I believe came from FIU two years ago. 
that kind of – and even Peyton Thorne in the run game. Peyton Thorne in the design run game, Jarquez Hunter, Demari Austin also in the back. It helps everybody. And like I said, it helps the defense. They're not on the field as much anymore. Special teams helps them as well. It helps everyone across the board. But, guys, I appreciate you joining me on this segment of who are the top five impact players for the Auburn Tigers and Hugh Freeze heading into 2024. I'm your host, Dave Shoemate. Go like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Get in the comments, guys. Tell me where I was wrong, where I was right, who you would add in there. I felt pretty good about this list. I felt like it was a well – Verse list across the board. It just wasn't explosive skill guys, quarterback, wide receivers, and running backs. I know my number one guy's a wide receiver, but it's in a big position that Auburn needed help. They hadn't had a great receiver in a long time, and you saw that last year with Peyton Thorne. So, guys, I appreciate you joining another segment. Keep following us on the rest of the segments. I know uh, this is Auburn fans probably like, I'm not going to follow anymore after this one. I just wanted to see what you said about Auburn. But I encourage you to go, go sell scout. Find out who some of the better opponents are um, on Auburn's upcoming schedule guys but again i enjoy i uh, appreciate you joining us on this segment again i'm your host dave shumate you have a phenomenal evening <laughs>